When building web forms, you need to account for users submitting the form multiple times, which could cause unwanted database updates or service requests made. Typically, users will hit the refresh button, double click a single click button, or QAs will machine gun click to try to break something. In this tutorial, we'll show a couple techniques to help prevent duplicate form submission. Creating a project following the Spring Boot tutorial in Spring Start Initializer website will create a project that includes Spring Web and Velocity as a template engine. We will import the project in Eclipse and begin creating the skeleton to our exercise. Let's create an HTML5 page that contains a form that will be used to post to a controller named Duplicate Form Submission. It contains web assets such as Bootstrap strictly for style and jQuery which will be used later to bind an event to a form. By using model attribute, we notify Spring to bind their request to a Java class named Submit Form, which the fields, name, and email address correlate to the HTML input attributes. This will be the base of our project, so let's run the application and access localhost 8080. Once we have accessed the default request mapping and validated that index.vm is processed, it is important before we discuss how Spring will handle users' action of hitting the refresh button, we talk about the post, redirect, and get pattern. When a user makes a successful post, instead of returning a web page directly, the post operation will return a redirection command, which will not duplicate form submissions. This way, when a user hits the browser refresh button, it will refresh on the redirection URL and not the post URL. As you can see, the form will post to slash handle and we will set up the code that once the post is successful, we will redirect to the default view. In the process, we will generate a random number setting a flash attribute which is a mechanism to temporarily store attributes across requests while using a redirect view, which is a helper class to perform the redirection. So to put this in words, when a user submits our sample form, it will route to the handle post method, which will generate a random number. Once it is successful, it will send a redirect to the browser, which will instruct it to make another request to the default view method returning the form. The random number will be carried across the request and pulled from the input flash map, which we will place into context for the view to render. Let's run our example to verify the behavior. The second approach will be to use JavaScript to disable the submit button. Even though you add JavaScript, remember it can be disabled in a browser, so it is possible that a user bypass this functionality. Using a jQuery selector to target my form on the page, we will bind an event handler when the form is submitted by calling the dot submit method. When the form is submitted, the button with an ID of my submit button will be disabled and the CSS class will be added. You should visually see the button gray out where you are unable to click it again. Let's run this example and set a breakpoint to simulate time on the request and see the effects of our code. Thanks for joining in today's Level Up. Have a great day.